Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining the webinar today. I'm Megan Shamas, and I lead marketing for the Fido Alliance. I'm really looking forward to today's webinar and having Marcio Bell here to talk about how Intuit rolled out Fido authentication across its mobile apps. But before we get to that, let me just go over a few housekeeping items. The webinar is being recorded, and we will send the video and the slides to you after the webinar. Uh, we're planning to save a lot of time for questions, so please do utilize the GoToWebinar client, the question function. Um, send in your questions. We will answer as many as we can. And then at the end of the webinar, you'll see a survey. Um, please take the time just for a few seconds to fill this out as it helps to inform our webinar program and other marketing programs. Now, let me introduce today's speakers. We have Marcio Mello, who is a director and head of product management for Intuit's identity and profile platform. We also have Andrew Shikiar, Fido Alliance executive director and CMO, who will be facilitating conversation and Q&A with Marcio throughout the webinar. With that, let me hand it to Andrew to kick off today's discussion. Thanks, Megan, and, and thank you, Marcio, as well. Um, you know, really excited for today's webinar. Um, I, I think as we progress in 2019, it's safe to say this has been a banner year for FIDO Alliance and FIDO Authentication. Uh, we're seeing great progress with device and platform adoption of FIDO, uh, which you know, really only sets the stage for, for bigger things to come. But perhaps you know, even more significant this year has been the growing number of leading brands and service providers that are not just deploying FIDO Authentication, but who are also standing up to talk about their deployment. And to me, I think this demonstrates and not only ongoing coalescence and momentum around FIDO authentication, but the fact that these companies are willing to stand up and talk about it, you know, shows that more and more companies are looking at authentication, not just as a means of you know, providing unfishable user authentication, but also as a top line business driver, right? So something that improves user experience and overall service consumption. So to that end, you know, Marcus has a perfect fit uh, for today's seminar, he's going to share details on the FIDO deployment that Intuit's implemented with Knock Knock Labs. Um, I've known Marcio now for several years, including at his prior stint at eBay. eBay's another early FIDO adopter. Uh, Marcio is a, a strong advocate for helping companies move away from passwords. And it's been a pleasure to have collaborated with him over the past couple of years as we all take this journey away from depending on shared secrets and moving towards modern. FIDO-based FIDO authentication. Um, so with that, let me uh, turn things over to Marcio to talk about what they're doing with FIDO and how this fits into part of their broader identity strategy. Marcio. Hey, thank you, Andrew, and thank you, Megan, for this opportunity to share our first important milestone here into it as we progress towards our long-term journey, like you said, towards uh, finally eliminate the need of passwords Altogether, I want to give a little bit more context, the background on myself. Um, I um, have been uh, uh, in this space for a while. Just let's just say that uh, it uh, it's been a great great journey uh, in my tenure at Microsoft for about 12 years, then at Intel, Intel Security for about five years, and a couple of years at eBay. Um, across these uh, great jobs that I had and great companies I worked for, one common theme has been about uh, my passion to help people, businesses throughout the world being able to enjoy their digital lives uh, more safely. And, and one common uh, uh, kind of denominator in terms of pain point is this uh, incredible resilience that passwords have had throughout the years. An old technology that uh, keeps uh, coming back for more and continue to be used in, in terrible ways and putting our customers, uh, no matter in, in what company you work for that you're listening to this webinar, uh, we all share the same pain and we all share the same passion. So I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I'll share, like I said, what I consider just the first step towards a, a, a long-term uh, relationship. So please, you can go to the next slide. I want to take a couple of minutes uh, here, not just because this is an incredibly powerful company mission that uh, uh, resonates with me and every employee at Intuit, but it also strongly connects to everything we do as part of the identity and profile platform team. Just think about it. Uh, Intuit has this super strong ecosystem, super powerful ecosystem uh, with consumers, families filing their taxes, 
small businesses, uh, depending on QuickBooks to run their businesses, self-employed, um, and a network of experts uh, helping these different types of customers getting things done, including bookkeeping, payroll, whatever type of service that they need. And all of these uh, experts also depend on the network, this, this ecosystem, uh, to make ends meet. In addition to that, we have our partners in the financial institution uh, space and developers extending the value of our platform. And all of these players need an identity, need to be able to play within the ecosystem in a trusted and secure way. But with that said, it's also about convenience. We have to remember that uh, the main reason these customers started a relationship with Intuit was to get something done to power their prosperity. Uh, and spending endless uh, time with, through multiple steps to create an account is not really viable in this day and age. We have to remove friction as much as possible in the first relationship with a potential customer so they can get to the value they came to Intuit for as quickly as possible. And then later on, when they come back to access their account, we also have to remember that uh, when they forget a password, there is pain, there's forget password flows that sometimes don't work and causes a call to support. All of this time that these customers are spending with the pain created by a something you know, old technology, it's time that are not spending powering their prosperity within the products they use from into it. So from a from an identity perspective, as I as I said, an identity verse, and I tell my team every time we have a team meeting, there's never been a better time to work in identity. Whatever role you play out there listening to this webinar, good for you, because you're part of an ecosystem, a part of a community that's still relatively small, but that became an essential part, core, to enable the businesses, no matter what segment they, they are. And that's it's super exciting because identity is no longer a nice to have. Identity is now a critical part of enabling business KPIs that are fundamental for the success of the company. So what I'm about to share is, like I said, a, a first milestone in a long-term journey. And I'm super excited to share this, this first step and get some, some questions on, on whatever uh, the, the flow that we implemented, the approach we took, and the technical decisions we made, we made throughout this uh, first milestone. So let's go to the next slide. As I said in my intro, um, we have to balance user experience and security. It, it, it's not a one size fits all. It's not acceptable to have a one size fits all sign up screen, sign in screen, and set of authenticators. And more and more of our customers are moving to mobile, and, and we had to have a mobile first strategy. Imagine a user experience on mobile like, like used to be, where you have multiple fields to fill in with your username, your password, uh, uh, not the best experience on a mobile device. It's cumbersome, it's prone to errors, it's pain, like I said. So we needed to build a, a user experience that was a lot more convenient, taking advantage of the platform and the capabilities that the platform offers to us. From day one, we, we said that we are going to be MFA and we're gonna move into a world that will remove the need of using passwords. Multi-factor authentication is, 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 is not negotiable when it comes to securing uh, the most sensitive personal and financial information of our customers. They trust us. We have to build the technologies that protect that, that information and raise the trust on our ecosystem. So MFA by default. And then from a security standpoint, we have to do whatever it takes to keep the account safe, avoiding account takeovers. And an account takeover is a massive impact to potentially a family, to a business, to a self-employed, to an expert. It may, it may interrupt uh, their source of income. We can't afford to do that. So from a security standpoint, we're marrying uh, the two different types of authentication, the passive and the active authentication, as I call them. Uh, um, some of you may refer as invisible signals that the user is not even participating, combined with the authentication factors that uh, the user participates on, something you know, something you have, something you are. 
uh, I don't believe we can we can be successful just with one type of authentication. It has to be a combination of signals coming from an invisible source that the user doesn't have to participate on, as well as uh, active factors that the user will, will, will participate. So that's kind of the framework and the priorities that we we laid out and we started in this, this decision to go with FIDE authentication for our mobile devices. Next. Why FIDO? Um, there are many reasons, and we can we can talk about this for for a long time. But uh, uh, not only the fact that you have the benefits of a standard, the fact that uh, investing on authentication uh, that's that's based on the FIDO uh, uh, UAF specification is not only not only future proof, but it's scalable. It it uh, reduces our operational costs. It uh, provides the the better experience that I was talking about. Um, so that uh, users don't have to worry about password, passwords anymore. Uh, and in this first milestone, take advantage of fingerprint slash facial for biometrics, uh, which is uh, really uh, becoming the de facto uh, uh, experience that customers expect on their um, iPhones, on their Android devices that have uh, a biometric sensor. And last but not least, better security. I mean, uh, this makes a huge difference and connects completely in that desire of having convenience and security. The, the public key cryptography, uh, the privacy, the no traceability, trackability, uh, credentials or biometrics that never leave the, the device, all of those are, are, are highly desirable capabilities and, 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 and features that made our decision to go with FIDO biometrics for our mobile devices a no-brainer. Next. So here I'll, I'll, I'll take a little bit of time to go through the key steps in rolling out the, the FIDO. First, first we start with the vendor evaluation. Should we do it ourselves? Should we use a vendor? And that criteria was uh, security, platform readiness, references, cost. Um, in the end, uh, um, we, we looked at uh, the, the different vendors in this in this space, and we were balancing, uh, you know, how how fast can we be as new authenticators come to market, uh, new protocols, new device types? Uh, how fast can we be uh, in, if, we, if we had to build it ourselves? And, and the speed to, to, to the benefit of, of, of getting these additional authenticators added quickly, uh, combined with uh, not having to spend valuable resources doing things that are not necessarily core to our business, um, uh, drove us towards a decision to partner with the company to expedite, to accelerate our uh, desire to move into FIDO biometrics for our mobile devices. And the company we chose was Knock Knock Labs, uh, the S3 platform uh, for both uh, iOS and Android, using their client library uh, within our apps for, for the, the client side uh, and, and the servers, the FIDO server also. Uh, based on Knock Knock Labs S3 platform. Why Knock Knock? I think, you know, based on just looking at the criteria, uh, not only because of their reputation, the, the, the types of customers they have, the fact that they have been a founding member of FIDO and have been in this journey and shared the passion about a uh, passwordless world uh, from, from the early days. Uh, all of these uh, combined with the cost savings and everything else that I just said, uh, made our decision to be very easy, and and we went with knock knock, and and we have been running it for the better part of a about a couple of years, year and a half, if you count the testing uh, time and then the production time. Um, with that decision made, uh, uh, we started an internal stakeholder education, including uh, again uh, here at Intuit, the identity team is a central team, part of the platform organization. So we power all these other organizations, the, the business units, the functional teams like marketing, uh, our customer success slash technical support, as well as the, the BUs, the business units such as uh, TurboTax, uh, QuickBooks, Mint, and, and, and others. So we had to do an internal uh, customer education with product managers, engineers, customer care agents, and others. So we decided uh, uh, to create a video. Uh, and I, uh, as you think about your final rollout, I strongly recommend spending time creating uh, easy to consume, easy to understand 
uh, material. Uh, obviously, you could go with any any uh, format you, you want to use, slides, whatever. We decided to go with the video because it, it, it better explain in, 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 in easy to understand steps and words what we were about to do, what, where we we're going from, and to with phytobiometrics. And the video was very well received by, by all the stakeholders, and, and they understood uh, what we're about to do and the value and the fact that there would be very little impact, if any, on their side, but a much greater success rate in terms of signing. Uh, so it became a, an easy sell, but uh, you have to do it. You have to build that momentum, that energy, that uh, uh, consensus around this is a no-brainer. We have to do it for our mobile devices. Then we build out the user experiences. Again, uh, it's critical for, for, for us to remember that uh, we cannot be the, the, the team that build the ugly UI pieces that uh, it's a cause of drop. Uh, that, that's 10, 15 years ago. In this day and age, identity needs to be as uh, delightful from a user experience as any other part of the product. So we, we, we really wanted to take advantage of FIDO biometrics to expose the registration, the activation of that uh, of that factor, uh, as well as the sign-in experience to be super seamless, super delightful, uh, uh, while keeping uh, the, the apps and the users uh, secure. Um, and then last but not least, as, as with any new technology uh, uh, that uh, is powering uh, a multi-billion dollar business, just think about tax season, uh, you know, anything new is important, incredibly important to be tested uh, before we can put it into production during tax season, for instance. Uh, so we, we decided to go with the first platform being TurboTax uh, and the user rollout. We upgraded the app and went with iOS first. This was, like I said, a couple of years ago. Uh, now we already support Android and iOS, which uh, Fido Biometrics is supported in many QuickBooks apps or SKUs that they have. A number of them already supported TurboTax, Turbo. So we continue to expand uh, uh, the adoption and usage of the file biometrics across Android and iOS and all the apps here at Intuit. I thought it was important to lay out this journey because uh, each step is critical to build that uh, momentum behind something that has uh, the, the potential to significantly impact a key business KPI, which is signing success rate. Oh, just a break for a couple of sips here. Next slide, please. So one of the, the migration slash user experience tests we did was using uh, the existing factors we had in the past, like a username and password uh, on a mobile device or a OTP sent over SMS uh, into the device to sign in compared to the FIDO biometrics. And um, the results were incredible. The, the, obviously, the, the desire to move into something that uh, we don't have to enter any, any text field to be able to authenticate or having to remember a password uh, was overwhelming. The response was, was incredible. So what we did was we start migrating uh, all the signing experiences based on OTP over SMS or voice call uh, uh, and, and uh, username and password as the primary factors to becoming secondary factors. Uh, and, and, and the primary factor be, being now the face ID or touch ID um, or, or the fingerprint on Android uh, on the mobile devices. Um, and uh, by combining that biometrics, uh, something you are with a trusted device ID, we already achieved the, the desired multi-factor authentication, the two-factor of the trusted device and the biometrics, which is a very powerful combination. Uh, uh, and we were very happy uh, with uh, the migration that we did and the adoption, which uh, I'll talk in the, about in the next slide. But please remember, um, this is about moving away and transition away from a world where the user needs to enter username and password on a mobile device. It's just not acceptable in this day and age. Uh, so it was, like I said, a no-brainer. Um, on the next slide, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of the, 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 the metrics which are uh, 
incredible. So next slide, please. So just as a as as a as a sample of some of the data that we have, um, close to 100% success rate uh, versus about 80 to 85% using SMS over I'm sorry OTP over SMS, and and maybe low 90s on a username and password depending on the season. Uh, you can think about the taxes and you file your taxes one year, you come back next year, the likelihood you're going to remember that username and password is much lower than a regular QuickBooks user. So the sign-in success rate varies significantly uh, uh, when it's based on a username and password based on the product that they're using from, from Intuit. But regardless, um, when we use the FIDO biometrics, the success rate is close to 100%. Uh, sure, there may be situations where the user is wearing sunglasses or a hat or something that, that may impact the, 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 the face ID recognition, but that's outside of our control. Uh, most users have uh, an easy time uh, signing in using their, their touch ID or their, their face ID, uh, and, and that was a significantly important bump in the signing success rate for mobile devices. Another critical metric was the reduction in signing time. Uh, not only, only the success, but the time it, it, it took for users to get in uh, was 78% lower than comparing to OTP over SMS or, or username and password. And, 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 and that's probably uh, obvious uh, to all of you out there because the time it takes for you to just look in the camera versus having to enter uh, uh, an OTP uh, code or enter your password is is incredibly different so that was that was very exciting to see our customers enjoying the signing now uh, into intuit products as a seamless process that they don't have to worry about anything other than getting to the product and do what they were looking uh, forward to doing another important part on the security side was some of our apps vary in terms of session time that they allow the user to remain signed in uh, because there are different risk levels depending on the app you're using mint versus QuickBooks, versus TurboTax. Um, regardless of what, what, uh, what amount of time the sessions used to be. So basically what we used to be doing is app unlock, but the session was already there, uh, which is not ideal from a security standpoint. Uh, so what FIDO Biometrics allow us to do is to shorten significantly the session times to, to a point that some apps, uh, basically you, you, you re-sign in every time you access the app, if that's the desire of the business, uh, uh, that, that can be done because it's so convenient. It's just looking at the camera you're in that uh, you no longer need to keep session times uh, uh, open for, for uh, longer than needed. Uh, and that was uh, a significant advance in terms of reducing the surface of attack for uh, our apps on the mobile devices. And overall, it, 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 which is a huge number, we, got, we saw a 6% increase in login success rates uh, across the apps. Uh, you can imagine when you think about how many uh, customers we have across TurboTax and QuickBooks, this is a, a huge win, and, and we're very, very pleased with, with these results. Obviously, uh, if you have questions about any of these, please feel free to use the chat to, to send the questions, because we'll, we'll spend uh, time answering those questions at the end. And then you may ask, okay, great. You, you partner with Knock Knock, use FIDO Biometrics, you got the, the FIDO Biometrics in, in, implemented on your mobile devices. So what's next? Um, well, that, like I said, the journey is long. I'm just gonna articulate at a high level some of the steps that we're already looking into uh, because like I said, um, this is a long-term journey. Um, so basically, some of the things we're looking into is expanding the use cases uh, with FIDO. We're very excited about the, the web authn support that was announced uh, earlier this year uh, in partnership with W3C. So we can finally, from any browser, being able to access local sensors, local authenticators on the device, uh, uh, which is incredibly powerful when you think about all the web cases that we have here into it. It's a lot of customers to use uh, their PC, their, their laptop, their Mac um, uh, on a web browser to, to do their taxes or to use QuickBooks. 
uh, online, for instance. Uh, and uh, you know, for those cases, uh, we we can't take advantage of the FIDO biometrics. Uh, and 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 now that we can um, take advantage of accessing those uh, some of those authenticators from the browser, this is, is definitely a natural next step uh, for us in terms of expanding the FIDO adoption across uh, our platforms, not just native but also web. Um, we uh, we are also looking at uh, how we're going to enhance uh, an area that I feel very passionate about. Uh, we talk we, we refer to as identity proofing. You may you may call identity verification. We are already running an experiment using uh, a third party partner that, that we are working with uh, to do driver's license uh, verification. Um, it's uh, incredibly important for Intuit, uh, as I spoke about our rich ecosystem, to raise the trust between the parties. Uh, you know, so, so when you decide to use an expert to help you file your taxes, you know that the expert is who they say they are. That 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 identity has been verified. That that Intuit vouches for that for that identity. And we can only do that with technologies that matches that the human being beh behind the device with uh, something that can prove their identity, such as an identity, as a government-issued identity, driver's license, passport, uh, and 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 we started this 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 test and it's doing quite well. We've optimized the experience several times already uh, by iterating, and it's an area that we see uh, as uh, uh, an important part of building trust within the ecosystem by you know allowing users, customers, and service providers to to have a a tr trust and safe environment to provide their services and help each other uh, and, and putting the bad guys out of the ecosystem because if they don't verify their identity, um, I think in the future, the first question we'll ask is what, what what are they hiding? What are they afraid of? So investing in identity proofing is definitely an enhancement that we will uh, continue to do over time. And uh, last but not least, um, we're investing on really changing uh, the game in terms of how we onboard users and how we uh, access, uh, allow access to, to their accounts in the future. We're looking in many ways on how to really build the, the experience based on the user intent, the app they're using, instead of having an onboarding experience that's a one size fits all. And we see FIDO playing a key role here so that we can use the factor to have the least amount of friction to get them onboarded, start using the product, and then add friction uh, uh, as needed at the point of need. And I'll talk more about that uh, in, in the next slide, but um, this is just a, a small uh, example of areas where we're gonna be expanding and why we're super excited uh, to partner uh, with FIDO uh, on expanding the access to FIDO authenticators, not only on the mobile devices, but also across all devices that our customers have. Next slide. So I'm not going to go through every point here, but I, I decided to to capture that in, in writing for you to review offline, as all of you are going to get a copy of, of the, the deck and, and the recording. Um, but uh, you know, some a couple that I will talk about. Uh, number one is kind of obvious, consider outsourcing components of the solution as needed. Don't try to build everything yourself. Uh, we, we are now in a, in a community that we have the best technology providers that can accelerate our strategy. Focus on what's important to you, uh, which leads me to point uh, number six, which is consider a progressive approach to registration. Uh, plan a, a simulation of pre-launch of the new registration and signing process uh, so that you can, you know, smooth any rough edges in, in the experience before rolling out to a wider customer base. And when I say about progressive approach, uh, I'm really talking about um, building uh, an, an, a, a registration or new account creation experience that may have one step and you're, and you're done to start, or a couple of steps depending on what the user is actually doing. Uh, I usually uh, use the example of the, the old school of putting the user through creating an account and adding a bunch of factors, password, email verification, phone verification, do all these, these extra uh, work to build these locks. 
uh, like authentication factors that uh, we're forcing the user to put on an empty safe. It's like buying a safe and forcing the user to put three or four locks when there's nothing valuable inside. So thinking about that in, 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 in a way that we build the registration in the future that allows the user to start, get to the value, the reward that they want to experience, and they, as more information gets added, uh, there is what we call desired friction from the customers. It's a moment where, oh, I see, it. I'm adding this additional uh, set of information. It is important to add more security. Uh, so there is a very different response uh, uh, from the first day, the first interaction, already asking for all these things up front that it's not related really to what the user came to do in your product. So the fact that now we have uh, uh, an identity space with so many different technologies and FIDO to be used uh, as necessary, it, it really allows you to build an onboarding flow that is custom tailored to the user intent, the entry point, the app they're using. And it's extremely exciting to be able to live in a world now that we can custom build this onboarding experience based on the user and not uh, the old one size fits all approach. Very exciting times. And, and I strongly recommend you to really build, help enable your businesses. Uh, using identity and, and authentication technologies in a way that grows with the user and not, hey, give me everything up front and now you can start enjoying the benefits of the apps that you came to use. That doesn't make any sense and, and we see that in the conversion rates. So that, I will leave you with that uh, number six as, as I, I, I think the, the primary thought and consideration. Um, seven is, is also uh, uh, something that uh, uh, it's important, but uh, I already talked about the, the pairing your fight implementation with a plan to shorten security tokens. I talked about that a little bit in the previous slide. Uh, but again, it's it's that balance of security and convenience. Uh, the nice thing about FIDO, you can decide what makes sense, and 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 FIDO empowers you to shorten or to you know lengthen the the the, the, the time for your token to live as needed, instead of having to. You know, oh, my tokens never expire, or the token expire always. No, it, it, it depends, and you can make that decision uh, because there's a flexibility on the authentication factor that the user is using. It's very easy to use, so you can decide what what makes sense in terms of uh, the the security token lifetime. I think that's what I had for today. Uh, um, we're about 25 minutes uh, to to the end of the of the session, but I wanted to get to some questions and, and also um, let Andrew jump in. Um, yeah, <clears throat> Marcy, that's great. Th thanks so much. So <clears throat> this is, uh, we're going to open up Q&A. I have a couple of questions I'll lead with, and then uh, we already have several from the audience. But Marcy, before I dig into the questions, though, there's one clarification, um, a question that we got. And I don't know if it didn't come through or not, but um, how are you doing authentication before FIDO? Was it, was it merely a password or, or were you doing two-factor across your properties before and you just moved to FIDO as a, a better means of MFA? Oh, it's, it's the latter. Uh, I don't want to get into the details of, of how we've done authentication, but uh, uh, it's probably like most of you out there have done it. You know, you, you start with username and password, you, you get some, um, like I said, a passive factors such as uh, device fingerprint and device ID, and then more uh, um, kind of active factors such as OTP over SMS, voice, and email, email verification, uh, phone verification. Um, some of those uh, are, are really not very user-friendly, uh, such as a KBA, or knowledge-based uh, authentication. Um, but it was, was a no-brainer to move into something that uh, uh, reduces friction, raises security, and and we don't have to put in front of the user authentication factor that you used to use that had lower uh, success uh, signing success rates. Okay. You know, one thing I think is real interesting about what you did, and 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 we get a lot of questions about this as you know at, as a FIDO employee, and I talk to potential deploying organizations, is you know the internal education aspect. All right. So you took the time to build a video, and I think you very smartly you know treated this as an internal sales job. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Did did your response, you know, vary by department, you know, within Intuit? 
either functionally or say by product type? Um, did you get any, you know, were, were certain groups more amenable to it? Did some have more concerns? How, how did that process well, work? It, 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 usually our partners uh, in, in security, fraud prevention, uh, they're the first ones to, you know, be with us actually because uh, they understand the technology, the value. So there's there's nothing to sell there. It's the other way around. They 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 are proactive in in partnering with us and and actually helping push the the message around uh, MFA around phytobiometrics. And so uh, I, I highly recommend making sure that you you partner very closely with uh, these other. Uh, security and, and fraud and risk management disciplines because it's we're all together on this. Um, from a from a, a functional and, and business unit standpoint, uh, there are different reactions uh, in, in terms of you know will the user feel comfortable with using biometrics to sign in? Will they understand that we're not really uh, taking any facial or fingerprint templates or images? Up to our to, to, to our Intuit server, uh, so there are lots of questions about you know um, what how would the users react, uh, uh, and 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 then some of these questions were easily answered by just getting data, just just showing to the business units that the the signing success rates in the tests we conducted were unbelievably higher than what we have today. In the end, data wins, right? I mean. If the experience is great and the data is showing that our customers are doing a lot better with the new technology, the the the, the BUs, the, the the functional units will, will immediately help you accelerate that because they see as a business enabler. You're helping them uh, grow the success rate and let them uh, that them, them, their customers get to their products faster and more securely. It takes time, but uh, it's 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 become it became a lot easier in this day and age where. Uh, biometrics is so widely deployed. But the, on the on the topic of biometrics, was there a comfort level with biometrics um, and the approach you're taking? So obviously you're going on device with the FIDO, you know, FIDO SDK, FIDO Authenticator. Um, were people were there any questions about that approach? Was there a desire for some reason to go with remote match or keep it local to Intuit? Um, I would say that uh, taking a step back, if this was maybe seven years ago or six years ago, before iPhone 5S with, with fingerprint uh, and, and all the work that the Android platform has done in enabling biometrics, uh, uh, maybe the reaction would have been different. Uh, as If you remember back in the days, some of the algorithms uh, were, were easy to, to break. Uh, some of the solutions relied more heavily on doing the matching in the cloud. Uh, and 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 you know a lot of concerns back then were 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 raised by customers saying oh, I I'm not, I, how am I going to reset my fingerprint is kind of kind of questions that we used to receive uh, so um, thanks to the, the the wide adoption post iPhone 5s uh, of fingerprint on mobile devices and, and, let, and then followed by uh, Face ID and, and facial recognition across so many products, um, the, the 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 barrier of, of resistance on the consumer side uh, went down, with, and, and and it became very easy because they understood that uh, you know there's there's no way that uh, we're stealing your face or stealing your fingerprint or or storing in an unsecure way information that's uh, biometric related. None of that is, is, is true anymore, and I think it's widely understood. So it became a lot easier. Uh, like, like I said, it's, a, it's the best time to work on identity because the technologies now are, are like, people not only like using them, they can't even think about going back to using a username and password on a mobile device. It's just, it's just uh, not acceptable. Yes. So I hope I answered your question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> You know, you share a lot of interesting data, um, and you talked about your journey. So, so two related questions that have come in from the audience, and share what you can. Obviously, don't share anything you can't. <laughs> um, sure. What is, you know, how how long has this taken you? You know, from the initial engagement on on through getting these these first metrics, and then a related question about metrics and, and KPIs. 
Um, you know, as you look at identity, you know, broader uh, in a broader sense, you know, what are some key KPIs you look at from you know beyond what you shared? I mean, so specific question is like, are you looking at registration, you know, signing conversion, or also are you looking at um, you know direct business metrics like buying and selling um, that are related to the authenticated users? Yeah, I'll share what I can. I'll start with the, the second part of the of the question. Uh, we have many other uh, metrics, but uh, to start with, the main one was the activation or registration of the the biometric, the FIDO biometrics on the mobile device. And we saw, I'll just give a range, uh, but let's just say above 80% take on rate when we offered to turn on the, the FIDO biometrics uh, on, on the initial tests. And that has been higher over time as we roll out into production. So there's a significant take rate, so the activation of the feature, and then post activation of the feature, uh, we were measuring the, 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 the return, the signing success rate, which you saw the numbers are close to perfect. Uh, so yeah, we, we measure uh, from a signing perspective first, uh, how many users are taking the offer and then how successful they are uh, on the return uh, access to the account. Uh, we are starting to build, and, and that I'll stay at a high level, uh, but we're starting to build these capabilities into the onboarding flow. Uh, we, we want to start measuring, um, uh, comparing the before and after in terms of steps that we can save. Uh, if you think about the common registration screen, usually companies will ask for a username and then they will say, enter your email, confirm your email, and then enter a password, confirm password, give me your phone, that may be optional. Uh, that's, that's quite painful. So we're, we're, we're challenging that. We're starting to build tests to go validate that uh, we can significantly help businesses convert a lot more during account, uh, first account creation, the first kind of impression. Uh, um, as you can imagine, no user comes to Intuit to experience registration. I mean, registration is, is a pain. It's a means to an end. And, and if they don't see the end first, uh, the conversion rates at, at account creation time can be uh, severely impacted. So what we're doing is, is starting to challenge that uh, onboarding experience to first, let the user experience the value, and then onboarding with the minimum that we need to keep uh, the data that we have so far safe, and then grow with, with the, the user in terms of friction and additional factors that we will add to the account. Um, those will have very different KPIs uh, because the entry points are very different from a, a mobile app versus a mobile web versus a desktop web, a, a TurboTax versus a QuickBooks. So that's very different. But uh, uh, we track all of these during the tests to compare and show that uh, we, we have something special for sure. Okay. Uh, then uh, yeah. you asked about the time it, it took. I, I wasn't here in the in the first few months of the project, but. Uh, um, I've seen the iterations that we've done being incredibly fast, as fast as a couple of sprints, uh, and we'll be able to optimize and, and, and launch a new, a new uh, optimization to increase the signing conversion rate uh, for, for the feature. Uh, we obviously had to spend the time uh, analyzing the partner that we were going to go with after we, we went to knock-knock, but uh, we very quickly create some POCs, uh, as you should do. To validate your hypothesis, run, run those tests, check on the performance, check on on, for instance, uh, uh, the the size of the the client uh, library that you need to embed on your app. We work the knock knock to optimize those 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 uh, KPIs as well to uh, you know really really nail the performance uh, and 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 making sure that we don't we didn't uh, increase the size of the app too much. Uh, to, to avoid affecting the download experience from the App Store. Um, so you do all that, uh, uh, usually in a couple of months, you, you, you're able to, to, to get through to these first steps of POCs and, and, and optimizations. Uh, I would plan for between the three and six months, depending on the size of the company and what you're trying to do, uh, from the POC to getting something tested and then uh, doing your first, uh, your first um, production 
roll out for a small percentage of the users. Okay. Um, so taking the biometrics a little bit, I think it'd be good to help educate um, the audience today on you know how you look at uh, FIDO biometrics, you know, versus writing just the native device API. So you, you obviously chose to go with the FIDO platform. You know, why did you make that choice, and and how did you delineate the, the difference between the two? Yeah, uh, again, you can decide to do yourself, integrate with every API of every platform for every sensor, or you work with the partner that you have one point of entry, and as the partner adds more support to additional authenticators, you have no work to do. You already you get the benefit right away. Um, uh, I think in terms of also scalability, security, uh, uh, it's it's if you're working with a, with established company that th the main focus is to expedite the integration of FIDO uh, by having a FIDO server and a FIDO client implementation, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, what happens in the platform or a specific sensor that has been called out. I heard in the news recently that one one of the, the devices on, on, say, the manufacturer had a sensor they had to, to, to recall. That that would cause a, a, a 911 situation that we have to go and do work so that customers cannot use that a sensor. Uh, working with the with the with a partner, we don't have to worry about that. You have one point to change the policy, and and and, and you're done. So uh, there are many reasons why uh, working with a partner uh, and working with Fido to accelerate our strategy is better than going on per platform and integrating with each platform API. This is a business decision. Uh, there is also a technical and a security angle to it, but in the end of the day. Uh, we believe that it makes a lot more sense uh, to have a partner, allows us to save on the resources, allow us to be very fast, uh, because when Knock Knock announces we support a new a new factor or a new authenticator, well, we get it for free. It's there. We we just need to enable in our in our products. Um, and 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 I think that's that's key to you know each one of you out there to when you when you think about the decision of should I integrate with each platform API, each platform sensor, or just have a FIDO implementation that allows me to scale, or allows me to always be compliant with the spec, uh, using standards and, and protocols that are widely adopted and used, or I want to go, uh, have to maintain a code that I that I built myself uh, and, and keep paying attention to where the platform is going. I hope that makes sense. Okay, if anyone has follow-up questions on that, please, please send them in. By the way, we have a ton of questions, so we're doing our best to, to work through these. Um, I'm glad we ha I left enough time for us to talk about this. Yeah, no, this, this is great. great. This is great. I mean, in general, Marcio, when we do these case studies, it's, it's, it's great to see the, the questions that come in. I can also tell, I mean, for all of you on the on the line, um, you know, we have a, a very large percentage of um, relying parties uh, who are attending today. So it's great to see so many people considering, um, you know, where, where FIDO fits into your own authentication roadmaps. Um, so we have some questions around device trust. So, so how do you look at device trust? How is device trust done in your current architecture? Are these things that you're looking at and how does that fit into your FIDO deployment? Yeah, trusted device is, is, a, is a critical part uh, of, of reaching two-factor authentication uh, in, on a mobile device. Um, we use uh, a, a third party, vendor that, that does the device ID, the device fingerprinting uh, in a secure way so that we can, uh, upon return to the same device, the user passes already one factor uh, and then we only need the additional factor that uh, they will interact with. Um, we decided to go with the vendor. Uh, I, I'm a big believer that the, the, the more you consolidate all these invisible signals for the user, the better. Uh, I'm a huge fan of invisible signals, obviously, because they they don't disrupt the user experience. And at the user experience, you can focus on the authenticators that make sense from a user experience and friction perspective. Uh, the more signals, the better. We use device fingerprinting as one of the, the signals, one of the passive or invisible authentication factors, like like pretty much every company out there in the in the finance space or any depending on the segment. You 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 have to use that as a as a key uh, uh, signal to decide on how much more friction you need to expose to the user. 
Um, but we decided to go with the vendor uh, uh, and, and, and we've integrated the device fingerprinting for a while now. Okay. Um, so uh, several questions here, I'm gonna try to group into one and it's um, about passwords, right? So, so you know, what do you have to do to, to really, you know, stop dependence on passwords? I know we talked, you talked a little bit about the forms of identity verification you're looking at, which I believe would allow kind of passwordless account creation. So a couple of questions, Marcia. Yeah, so one, do people still have the option today to, you know, on, on the native app or native on mobile to, to use passwords or register with passwords? Um, or is that a fallback? And also in a related note for account recovery, um, how are you tackling account recovery? And this is, you know, a known challenge, you know, a known challenge for, you know, FIDO deployments uh, that, you know, FIDO as an organization is focusing on developing best practices and publishing those best practices. But how, how is Intuit tackling that and the related topics of, you know, truly being independent from passwords? I think we need to order some food, some some drinks. <laughs> that, no, I'm kidding. That, this, this is this is this is the question, right? Um, people who know me, they 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 know how much I hate passwords. Uh, I know hate is a strong word, but uh, it's time. I mean, I mean, it's it actually it's way past time. Uh, some of us have been in this industry for so many years, a couple of decades, and I can't believe that's almost 2020 and and still passwords are the most utilized form of authentication out there it's a disaster uh, it's a, it's an embarrassment um that said um we we still have to support it uh we still have to support it um are we working on flows now that are completely passwordless you better believe it um it's our company uh is committed to multi-factor authentication, is committed to more and more making passwords optional, and more and more uh, get to a point where passwords can be eliminated altogether. We're happy to hear some of the work that's going on with, with the IRS and NIST in regards to what requirements must be met before someone can file uh, an online tax return. Uh, as you can imagine, across many segments that are policies that are out, outdated uh, and and I'm, I'm i'm thrilled to see that they are quickly catching up to some of the past decisions that were terrible uh in terms of forcing upon the poor consumers out there uh, password creation policies that are absurd uh, and are only causing more problems uh, i'm glad to see that some of the the, the thought leaders in, in the password space are now taking it back saying that uh, that was a bad idea to, to force users to create you know, minimum eight characters, lowercase, uppercase, number, special character. Uh, all that caused was users to create exclamation mark password with the capital P123. Now it's the most popular password out there. So we have to put an end to this thing. Uh, is it gonna be tomorrow? No. But is, it, is now the best time ever in my career that I see the opportunity to do so? Heck yes. And 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 I, I want to work with everybody out there that's listening to this because we're all in this together. No matter what company you work for, uh, uh, we can only win together. Because if you still support passwords, you're, you 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 know, and we're not working together to in a path to eliminate passwords, that's bad because our customers will be your customers as well. So we have to start building this trust trusted ecosystem that Fido is helping create to accelerate making passwords optional and then finally eliminate them. Uh, to answer your question, uh, we, we, without giving you any, any confidential details, we are working on onboarding flows, some tests that are doing very well on mobile devices that are completely passwordless. And I, 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 I'm jumping up and down in excitement uh, uh, because uh, that's what we need. we need. We need companies like Intuit to be the thought leader, to, 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 to show that it's possible, and, and, and I can't wait for the future versions of our products to start onboarding users without starting by asking, hey, give me this password that's ridiculously complicated to create. And by the way, type it twice. Anyway, uh, we'll get there, uh, Andrew. Sorry, I can't provide more, more details, yes, but I strongly, I strongly uh, 
put the word out there for everybody listening, uh, either live or, or the recording, to, to make that a priority. Start testing, follow up with us, we can work together. Uh, we need as, a, as an industry to, to, to really work together towards a common goal of getting rid of past results together. Okay. So, so moving forward a little bit, um, you know, so you detailed how, you know, your first step here has been with the, na the native app. You know, so you're kind of matching your, your use case to, to the right. spec. But as you look at bringing this to the desktop uh, and leveraging FIDO2, um, what are some unique considerations that you're thinking about, some unique requirements for that? Both from a you know a backend infrastructure standpoint and a you know maybe a user experience standpoint or even compliance standpoint things like that. What are what are considerations for desktop and web that you don't have for native app? Yeah, um, a lot more complex when you go into the desktop or mobile web world because of the browser being the main vehicle of uh, account creation, account access, and account management. Uh, and when you get to the browser, you are a little bit, um, you was until web off end. So uh, f from leveraging um, existing sensors on that device that, that every single desktop or laptop has a camera, you know, has a USB port. Um, and, and we're excited to, to leverage the low hanging fruit that's already out there, uh, starting with Microsoft with Windows 10, uh, with Hello and Local. Uh, authenticators such as the local pin on Windows 10 or the hello uh, face uh, recognition. Uh, I, I, I think it's a no-brainer that uh, one of the first things we want to to start going with FIDO on the, on, the, on the desktop is leveraging some of these local authenticators that the consumers already use to get into their OS. Uh, obviously if there is a little something better like being able to use the fingerprint or be able to use uh, a touch ID on a, on a Mac Pro or something like that, that even better. Uh, we, ne we need to start using the resources on, on that device that's, a, that's super powerful uh, from the browser. And that, that's a, 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 a next step for sure in our roadmap. Um, another, another area that we need to, to continue to invest as an industry is you know, providing more convenient authentication factors in, in, a, in, a, in a broad deployment uh, kind of situation. For instance, I'm, I'm a big fan of authenticators, but I'm not that big fan of authenticators for, for mobile devices that you have to install a separate app, like on an enterprise identity access uh, management solution. You can force upon your employees anything you want. Uh, their option is to quit, uh, but you cannot force anything you want upon your consumers. Uh, if you have to force them to download a separate authenticator, it's, 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 it's a bad, bad, bad source of friction. And most of them will not even understand why they need to download a separate app. Or if you can embed into our own apps the ability to receive uh, push notifications from uh, into a secure app that we own uh, from any device, uh, I, I get very excited about uh, using your, your, your mobile phone as the key to unlock other devices around you by simply authorizing access or authorizing plus you know, presenting a biometrics. Uh, in addition to that, if you desire to do so. Uh, I, I think that's a great step also in, in our roadmap to start supporting push notifications into our native apps. Okay. Uh, anyway, the, I'm just giving you a couple of examples, but that, that will be a lovely topic to, to discuss offline more. Yep, absolutely. So so one, one last question, um, and, and we're at time. Um, so one thing you know, Fido is looking at doing as we move into 2020 is is elevating the Fido brand with consumers. So not necessarily being a household consumer brand, but you know, maybe being equivalent to something like a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Right. Um, this isn't something we've talked that broadly about publicly, but you know, it's something that we've heard input from relying parties that you know they'd see value in having some sort of common common brand and common experience or, or common you know marks as users log into different Fido services. What, what's in, what how's intuit feel about that or how do you feel about that you know would you would you plan to message to your customers that they're using the fido standard um would you you know in, would you intend to use some sort of you know branding or mark and what would it take to get you there so i think there's a spot well i you know i <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you uh no uh as quickly as i can because we're out of time but uh um i think it's a chicken and egg situation uh, we want to help FIDO by adopting 
and we want to see Fido uh, really investing in, 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 in elevating the, the, the value and, and the trust when, when a company like ourselves says, uh, you know, we, we are powered by Fido, uh, your authentication is secure, you're safe, you know, uh, and here's why. Uh, the more there is broad understanding uh, across consumers and small businesses that companies investing in Fido authentication are companies they, they should trust more and they should uh, expect a more convenient and secure experience when they create and access their accounts. Uh, uh, is an incredibly powerful message. Uh, would we be the ones driving it first? I don't. I don't think so. Uh, I think we'll, we we need to work with you, Fido, to help get the message out about the standard. Everyone out there knows what Bluetooth is, what USB is. Uh, um, I think that that's something we need to work together to first get the message out that uh, you know, look for apps and, and services that support Fido authentication. Because you, you you're going to be a lot safer, and the authentication will be a lot more convenient for you. So that's something that we would love to 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 message to our customers. But I think first we need to go do the the kind of the, the seeding across the market for for the brand to be related to something very very positive for the customers. Okay. Super. Well, hey, Marcio, thanks so much for your time today, and and thank you all for for joining, um, and and for your your very good questions and for your attentiveness today. Um, okay. We didn't answer all the questions. If you have more questions in the audience, you know, feel free to email us at help at fidoalliance.org, um, and we can filter those and pass them on to Marcio if they're you know specific to Intuit. Um, as a reminder, we did record this. Uh, the slides and the webinar recording will be emailed to you and post it on our website. And last but not least, you know, please take a moment, if you will, uh, to take the survey when you log out. Um, your feedback helps inform our webinar program moving forward, and we, we really you know, value your inputs. So with that, thanks again, Marcio. Thank you all. We'll look Thank forward you. to seeing you on a future FIDO webinar. Have a good day. Thank you.